Hello and welcome to the Bane Picks video for Kent State at Bowling Green. I'm your host, Matthew Mata for Lamps.com. Joined here by Jacob Wayne. We have another Wednesday matching game. Kent State favored by two and a half points on the road to Bowling Green over under a 55. And Jacob, where is your money leaning in this one? Yeah, I'm going to be on Bowling Green here. Um, Batham last week and a bit of an unlucky result to end up with a push on the plus four. Hopefully you got the plus four, not the plus four and a half. Uh, they did end up winning by four, or sorry, minus four, not minus, not plus four. Um, they did end up winning by four, but they turned the ball over three times, including uh, one goal line fumble as they were running in a touchdown. That was just infuriating, but um, they were definitely the better side in that game. I, I think you look at this, and the biggest handicap for me in this game is going to be Matt McDonald, the Bowling Green quarterback against Kent State's secondary. Uh, you look at the Golden Flashes, and they started the year with just a brutal non-conference schedule against Oklahoma, Washington, and Georgia which is ridiculous in hindsight. Um, and it was like, okay, you know, we, we can start to buy their defense. Like, they're going to start to face MAC teams. They should get better. But you look at the results against some of these MAC teams, and it's really not good at all. Uh, they still rank 116th in yards per play allowed. And their pass defense is really struggled. They rank 125th in passing success rate allowed overall. So you look at Mac McDonald, and he's having a really nice season, um, averaging 6.6 .6 yards per attempt, 73% adjusted completion rate, 16 touchdowns to three interceptions. So... Uh, Bowling Green really can't run the ball, but they don't have to against this Kent State defense. I think Matt McDonald's going to have plenty of success through the air. And then you look at the other side, and Kent State really wants to run the ball. They run the ball at the 11th highest rate in the country. Colin Schley has been eh, really underwhelming to me uh, in replacement of Dustin Crum. And as a result, they've been a very run-heavy team, and that will be even more the case with Dante Cephas, their top receiver, questionable for this game. Um, they do rank top 15 in rushing success rate, but... You look at this Bowling Green defense and where they're most successful is against the run. They rank 14th in rushing success rate allowed. And they rank 16th in defensive havoc, whereas Kent ranks uh, 93rd in havoc allowed. So this Bowling Green front seven should have the upper hand. And then you look at their passing game and they should have the upper hand as well. So a couple of key matchups there. And I, I like the points with the home team here. If you want to play the money line at plus money, I don't blame you. But I'm just going to play the plus two and a half because Matt games get wacky. And if Kent State wins by one point, then so be it. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards the Bowling Green money line at plus 115. I think, honestly, they're being kind of deflated due to, let me backtrack really quick here, due to that one loss against, was it Buffalo, the big loss? Yeah, 38-7. to seven. But, I mean, you know, 17-13 to 13 against Miami, 34-18 against Central Michigan, 13-19 against Western Michigan. Their defense has been... You know, pretty good for max standards. And Kent State's offense is, so, it's like getting worse. I feel like every single game that we watch, yes, a lot due to injuries, but also I just haven't liked their game plan. And it's like, this is an offense, I feel like, even with a backup quarterback that should be, you know, doing something of note, but they're not. And I'm, I'm fine betting against them in this game with the Bowling Green money line at plus 115. I would love to get the team total for Bowling Green over what is probably... That would be like 24 and a half, 23 and a half, whatever the line ends up coming. And I honestly don't mind the total over for this game if you have a little bit more faith in the Kent State offense than I do. I think this is kind of a high scoring matchup. I think both teams are going to have kind of explosive plays, but I really do think this Kent State defense is going to continuously give up explosive plays to Bowling Green. I just, it's not a good defense. It, it's a really bad one. I, I think. If anything, there's going to be some havoc in this game, as you alluded to, Jacob, and that will lead to turnovers, hopefully, which leads to points, not turnovers, stopping drives in the red zone. Obviously, a little bit of variance and a little bit of risk there, but I I just see so many things pointing towards tons and tons of points in this one. And if you look at Bowling Green's kind of last few games, you're probably staying away from the over. I mean, again, 13-9 against Western Michigan, 34-18 against Central Michigan, 17-13 against Miami of Ohio. Um, even the Buffalo game, 38 to seven, cause they got blown out. So this, this number is not looking super juicy, but I think it's a sharp number. I actually think this game is conducive to quite a bit of point scoring again on both sides. I'm not super confident in Kent state. So that's why I'm leaning the Bowling Green team total once that comes out. But I think this is going to be a very fun Mac game. Um, if you're looking for just a viewing experience. Yeah, one one uh, thing that gave me some more confidence in the Bowling Green side is, you know, you, you look at some of these weather situations, and if there is weather, the team that runs the ball more tends to have the upper hand. But 
We're looking at really beautiful weather in Bowling Green on Wednesday. Uh, 70 degrees, um, 11 mile per hour winds, but really no rain. So I think that should be pretty con conducive to the passing game for Bowling Green. Um, and if Dante Cephas is able to play, I, I do think the over could be in play here. Um, I do agree with you on the Bowling Green team total, though. I, I think that might be the best look overall um, in addition to the Bowling Green side. Oh, you're muted. It's funny because I was literally saying I don't have much to add and something <laughs> not ironic but co coincidental about me being muted. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up. Some of these Mac games are going to be a little bit shorter, especially with just Jacob and I, but I think provide all the analysis needed. Jacob, you have the plus two and a half for Bowling Green. I have the money line, and then we're both going to be on the Bowling Green team total when that comes out. Hopefully, it's at 23 and a half and not 24 and a half, but yeah. I'll still take it there. Um, just a quick side note. Once things get above 24 for me, I often the, will look at the total touchdowns um, and see if you can get slightly better value there. And, of course, mm -hmm. you want to compare that across sportsbooks. So, just a note. But... That's going to wrap things up. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you liked this video, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Hit the subscribe button to see more content like this, including us covering every single midweek MAC game for the remainder of the season, as well as every midweek college football game. Check out the website where you can find more great analysis by Jacob covering NFL and college football, and we will see you for the next one very soon.